Hi, Pitch Chris here for a Junior Youth uh, Extra. Um, I was asked to give a tour of the church. Actually, I wasn't asked, but just uh, uh, wanted to make sure that it was there. So um, I think the fifth and sixth graders might, or fifth graders might be doing this uh, soon. Uh, just so you know what the parts of the church are and what they're called and that kind of stuff. So I'm starting outside because uh, I want to show the, uh, the, the bell here. Um, now, a lot of churches have bells. Um, and so we have bells so that uh, people before there's like lots of clocks and watches that's how they knew when to get to church. Uh, so now we take clocks and watches and phone stuff for granted uh, but they would ring it enough time for people to, to stop what they're doing and get to church in time. Uh, and then we have like a, a, a Luther's rose of sort there above the door uh, in there. So uh, that's part of it just a, a call to worship is the bell. I'll go in here. So the, the lobby of the church is called a narthex. Um, and so this is where people uh, come in and gather. Um, in newer churches, they um, have, uh, generally the rule of thumb is if to rebuild a church, uh, the narthex would be about um, a third of the size of the sanctuary. And uh, so comfy couches, just for people to like sit and chit chat after service um, <laughs> when days of um, COVID's over. Um, and so that's there. So I'm going to show you around here. Um, and these are back here are um, snuffers. And so the, the acolytes, those who light candles, use that. So an acolyte's a candle lighter. Um, and once again, because of the pandemic, we decided not to do that for now. But um, Hopefully, in the not too distant future, we'll be getting back to uh, lighting candles where uh, you'd go up and um, light them for communion. Uh, we'd light the candles on the altar generally for communion, uh, and that's about it. So, we are leaving uh, the narthex uh, and heading into uh, the sanctuary. Now, this part of the sanctuary is called the nave, N-A-V-E. And it sort of sounds like the English word uh, navy. Um, and so if you think about the, the church, uh, if you ever look up, it sort of looks like the hull of an old wooden sailing ship. And the idea is that those who are in the church, uh, those who are in the nave are safe, whereas those who are outside the church are sort of are tossed, storm tossed out and that kind of stuff. And so uh, the idea is that we want, want folks to be um, in uh, in the church. Uh, so we have the nave. Uh, the seats are called pews. Um, in different churches, some churches have chairs, some have pews. Uh, I've been to Orthodox churches where there were no ch neither chairs nor pews and you stood. Um, and so we've got the hymnals there. Uh, what is very prominent in our worship, or our sanctuary, is the baptismal font. And there's a reason for that because uh, baptism is the entrance into God's kingdom. Uh, when God places his name on you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, uh, a lot of baptismal fonts have eight sides. That's a, a number of wholeness and completion. And so the earliest, earliest baptismal fonts that we found in archaeology uh, are indeed eight-sided. In fact, uh, the earliest church, dedicated church, has eight sides to it. So uh, for baptisms, the, um, the lid gets removed and water's put in there, and uh, I for one like to use lots and lots of water and get like people very wet, so uh, that's okay. Um, this is called the Paschal candle, or the Christ candle, and usually we eat, we light this on Easter and other celebrations where there's white. And so here you see at the top, this is, it looks like an A, that's actually an alpha, which is the first letter in the Greek alphabet, and that's the omega, which is the last letter in the Greek alphabet. So there's a passage in scripture where it says, Jesus says, I am the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end, uh, and the first and the last. So um, this is our pulpit here, okay? And that's where we, we preach from, where I preach from. Um, some churches have a separate lectern. Uh, where the lessons would be read and the preaching would take place in the pulpit. Uh, some pastors actually sort of stand in the center and, and wander out to preach, and that's, that's okay, too. It's a symbol of where God is. So um, these red things now, and they change the colors of the church, are called pyramids. Uh, so this pyramid is actually dedicated this morning, um, and there you see a palm leaf and a, 
uh, a chalice, which is the, the cup that's used for communion and a communion wafer there for, for Monday, Thursday. Um, it was uh, St. Luke's Day, so we're able to do the red and I want to dedicate the new parents here. So um, this part, you know, the, the nave out there and then up these steps are the chancel. Um, and there's a reason why a lot of churches have steps up to the altar because it's elevating things higher. It also makes uh, it easier for people to, to, to sit and to see. Um, so that's what's going there. So we have in our church a clavinova and an organ. Um, there's no right instrument or wrong instrument in the Christian worship space. Um, I actually like hymns played on guitar. Um, personally, um, I don't like a traditional pipe organ. Um, big honking things, um, but I'm partial that everyone's got their own own taste. Uh, the important thing is that the hymns are accurate reflections and theology is good. So um, this is the um, altar. Um, and so here again, you see the uh, the red for, for um, Holy Week. That'll be for um, Palm Sunday or Sunday of the Passion. Uh, Monday, Thursday, we would have these pyramids on. We got several ones for Good Friday, but you see a, a lamb that was, was pierced there. Um, and the different colors change with the church here, just to give a different focus here. On the altar itself, you'll see a, another Alpha and Omega. In the center there, the thing that looks like a P and an X is actually, uh, it's called a chi row. So the Greek letter that sounds like a C um, in the Greek is a chi. And the Greek letter for uh, that sounds like an R is a row that looks like a P. So it's a chi row. And those are the first two letters of Jesus' name in uh, in Greek. And so that's been a a symbol of of Jesus um, there using those Greek letters. Um, we have the cross, the um, altar cross or, or a sign there, and um, it, it's uh, there. Uh, we have the um, pyramids, or the, the red things of fabric again. Um, we have a, a chalice and a, a, a pate a commune, uh, for communion there. Uh, the communion elements would go on. Uh, and we have candlesticks um, and candles. Um, Really, the candles originally were just for uh, to give light, you know, so nothing uh, nothing super special about candle um, Except they give light there, and then we got a got the hand sanitizer that kind of thing there, so um, So when I'm standing behind the altar, uh, this is what I see Um, But yeah So that's that's the sanctuary proper Um, and there's all sorts of different ways of of doing it um, and there's no one way or right way um, in this room is called the sacristy uh, which is where communion stuff is is prepared and so there's a, a fridge and we've got a, um, storage for the the, the, uh, the pyramids in here okay yeah, there's black Friday and stuff so that's where we keep that stuff uh, and this is where the stuff is is set up there and then this is where uh, my vestments are. The vestments are the robes, the things that we wear in church. Uh, so if you like wear a vest, it's like a clothing. Uh, so a, a vestment is clothing. And sometimes the, the room where uh, pastors and communion assistants get dressed is called the vestry. So this is actually a dual sacristy and vestry all in one. Um, so that's what's there. So um, there's me. Hi. Uh, and uh, and so that's the quick tour of the church. So um, in the catechism uh, on the back, and I had that out, and I should have had there, uh, there's a whole list of liturgical terms uh, that are good to use and uh, terms or with a worship space as well. Um, and let me see if I can, ah, uh, there's my catechism. I'll tell you exactly what page it's on right here. Um, so uh, that's a resource available in the back. Um, and so let's see our conjure. Okay, so it's on page um, 383. Uh, it's not focusing there. Uh, terms related to worship in God's house. Uh, in this area, you see some of those, those words I mentioned. Um, there's one on here, crucifix. Uh, and what that is, is that some churches have a cross with the Jesus on it. And that would be seen as a crucifix. So, um, 
hopefully, hopefully you found this interesting. Um, and uh, I pray that uh, your life in the church is one where it's marked where uh, you take comfort and refuge in the things of God. So uh, God's blessings.